Hey there, savvy home buyers and sellers. This is Jeff O'Leary, the Village Guru, Miss Saga Real Estate Broker. And in today's episode, I wanna look at population projections for Ontario and the GTA over the next 20 years and how they affect real estate prices. This episode is great for investors, home buyers, home sellers. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Let's go. All right. So I've wanted to do this video for a long time because as you know, I do a lot of real estate videos. They're on YouTube, they're on social media, and a lot of people question the numbers because they think I'm a real estate agent and everything's positive in order to sell houses and I have this magical power over people, which doesn't exist. But anyway, I tend to be bullish on the Toronto real estate and there's a good reason. When I look at the facts of what's going on in real estate, I always look to supply and demand. And the biggest thing that I see that affects supply and demand is future population growth. Now, today I wanna go over a couple of things that to point out to you that I think if you see these yourself, you might start to see the world the way I do and realize that Toronto real estate isn't going anywhere and that it's probably gonna be a lot stronger in the future. So first off, if you go to the Ontario Ministry of Finance website, you can find population projections for the province of Ontario from now until the year 2046. Now I wanna point out that this is not some blogger on here doing this, this is the Ministry of Finance. They have professionals, academia, they're doing the research on this and I would take these numbers as the best projections as to what to expect the GTA to grow like in the future. Now the cool thing about this study is it gives you what they think is going to happen but it also gives you different scenarios so on the low end or the high end. So right now I'm going to just look at what they think is going to happen which is the middle ground. As you can see when you look at it right away the GTA is projected to be the fastest growing region in the province with its population increasing by 3.4 million people or 49.6 percent from six 6.8 million in 2018 to over 10.2 million in 2046. That's telling me the population in Ontario, especially in the GTA, is going to continue to grow a lot in the near future. Next, I challenge you to Google fastest growing cities in North America. I found this uh, article from the CBC. It was a study by Ryerson University in 2018. It showed the city of Toronto as the fastest growing city in North America. And when we take the census area, which includes the GTA, all the other cities like Mississauga, Vaughan, all the other surrounding communities, it was the second fastest metropolitan growing area in North America just behind Dallas Fort Worth. So that tells me our area is still expanding, it's still growing, so that's a good sign. Next, if you want to research this further, go online and type in projected immigration into Canada over the next 20 years. You're going to see that immigration continues to remain high and that the government that we have is encouraging more and more immigrants to come. Now, with the coronavirus and the amount of debt the country's taken on, my personal belief is that immigration in the future will continue to rise because in order to balance the debt versus the population and GDP, the more people you have, the less of a problem that debt becomes. Again, if half the immigrants to Canada are coming to Ontario and the vast majority are settling in the GTA, that just means that we could even see more than the projected numbers that the province of Ontario has put in their report. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you something that is really the main contributor to rising house prices here in the GTA. So over the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, the Ontario government has protected the Oak Ridges Moraine and the Niagara Escarpment, the green belt that surrounds the GTA. Just Google the Green Belt Act. There's a whole report on it with maps and everything to show you what's going on in this province. And as you can see, when we look at this map, you see Toronto, you see Peel, York, the gray areas are all developed in the GTA. The only development happening in these areas is tearing something down and building something in its place, which means high rise condos, high density property. Now, when you look at this map, the little yellow areas, which there's not many left, so you know, there's some area in Halton region, some areas north of Brampton, that's the area available to develop subdivisions, houses. Again, I know everybody thinks everybody wants to live in a little condo, but I still think the average Canadian wants that dream of a house. They wanna own a house like everybody else, but this is showing me that with a population that's bound to double over the next 20 years, there's not a heck of a lot of land left to do this, which means if houses remain in tight supply, it puts upward pressure on prices. 
Now, finally, I want to point you to a document I found by the Ontario Home Builders Association. It has stats from CMHC and it shows the amount of new construction starts in the province by a yearly basis. Now this reports from 2019, but it'll work for this video because of what it's showing us is how many homes are being built in the area. So number one, when we, when we say Toronto in this report, it just doesn't include the city of Toronto. It includes the Toronto CMA area, so all the suburbs. And what really sticks out to me is that if we have a population growth that's gonna average 150,000 people a year, in 2019, there was only 30,462 homes built in the GTA. That's really not keeping pace with what's going on in the population growth. And in fact, when you break it down by segment, the vast majority of those are condo apartments at 21,000. And when we get all the way over to single detached homes in the GTA, only 4,200 were made. So if anybody sits there and looks at all the numbers and the facts, you're gonna realize we're gonna to continue to have a housing shortage unless something severely changes. So either the Greenbelt Act changes, which what nobody wants it to change, and that's fine, I agree, or immigration needs to stop. Now, I don't see any of those happening. So this is kind of the scenario we're looking at. Now, this is why you see areas like Barrie, Kitchener-Waterloo, Niagara Falls, places as far as Kingston, continuing to rapidly rise in prices because people are leaving the city if they cannot afford their house here and they're going out there. However, over the long term, if our population doubles, you're gonna see more congestion on highways, harder to get into the city. You know, being an hour and a half away from Toronto now might be two and a half hours in traffic by the time that happens. So again, when all these things combine, people are still gonna wanna live in the city because I don't see any 500 mile an hour trains being built anytime soon. And even if they finally say they're gonna do it, it's gonna take 20 years to do. So that's what I look at when we're looking at housing starts. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed my episode on population growth in the GTA over the next 20 years. At the end of the day, things can change. However, I tend to look at facts and numbers when making any type of prediction or suggestion on when the real estate market's going. I know a lot of people like to go off emotion, what's happening in the current day. Don't do that. Because what I've seen is people who bet against the real estate market, they tend to lose in the long term. Listen guys, use logic, use facts, you'll never go wrong. There you have it, I'm Jeff O'Leary. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. Have yourself a great day.